In this video, we're finally going to be able to learn how to take our knowledge of acute angles and translate that to solving trig functions for any angle, positive angles, negative angles, and angles greater than 360 degrees. For example, you should be able to solve any questions like this, cosine of 225 degrees, tangent of negative 225 degrees, and sine of 690 degrees. And to do this, we're going to go through these steps. First of all, we will find the reference angle. Remember, the reference angle is the angle between the terminal side of the angle and the x-axis. This angle is always acute. The second thing we'll do is find the trig function value for that reference angle we found. We're going to have to remember those special angles I asked you to memorize. Those were the 30 degrees, the 45 degrees, and the 60 degree angles. We'll be using those again. And finally, we have to determine whether the trig function is positive or negative based on the quadrant and which trig function we're talking about. Well, let's first take the example of cosine of 225 degrees. Again, we have to find that reference angle, that acute angle that we can use. Well, we'll do this by taking our xy axes and remembering that the positive x-axis was 0 degrees, the positive y-axis represented 90 degrees, the negative x-axis represented 180 degrees, and the negative y-axis was 270 degrees. So if we're trying to find an angle of 225 degrees, I'm pretty sure it's going to fall between 180 and 270 degrees, or somewhere in the third quadrant, something like this. Well, again, we want to find the reference angle, the angle between the x-axis and our terminal side. To figure out what that number is, we're going to take our angle, 225 degrees, subtract from it 180 degrees, and see what's left over. Well, if we do that, we find that angle is 45 degrees. And that's good, because that's one of our three special angles we know. I know that the cosine of 45 degrees is equal to square root of 2 over 2. So that is our next step, finding the trig function value for the reference angle we found. Again, you need to go back and memorize the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees if you haven't already done so. We'll be using them over and over and over again in this class. Well, we have one more step we have to figure out what the sine is. We need to know whether or not our trig function is positive or negative. So we look at the quadrant, and we have our terminal side in quadrant 3. And if we go back and remember that all students take calculus, and if we have quadrant 3, only tangent is positive, which means our cosine is going to be negative in quadrant 3. So that means the cosine of 225 degrees is equal to negative cosine of 45 degrees, or negative square root of 2 over 2. We can also check this with our calculator. If I'm in the correct mode, make sure you're in degree mode, and you, in your calculator, press cosine 225, enter, then you will get the result of negative 0.7071. Again, that is not the exact answer, but that is the result you get when you type in negative square root of 2 divided by 2 on your calculator. So it's a good way of checking to make sure you haven't made any mistakes, particularly with whether the answer is positive or negative. All right, let's look at the tangent of negative 225 degrees. Again, we have to first find that reference angle, but if we recall from a previous lecture, what we'll do with negative angles is add complete rotations, that is, add 360 degrees, until we have an angle that's between 0 and 360. If we do that to negative 225, we add one complete rotation, and we're already within 0 and 360 degrees, with an answer of 135 degrees. Again, we'll take that 135 degrees, graph it, on our xy axis, and we see it's in quadrant 2, and we can find that reference angle, the angle between the terminal side and the x-axis, to be 45 degrees. And we'll remember 
the tangent of 45 degrees, again we can sketch that 45, 45, 90 triangle, and we remember a tangent of 45 degrees was equal to 1. Again, our last step is determining the sine of this trig function, and if we're in quadrant 2, we see the tangent is negative in quadrant 2. So, that means our, so we'll see our final answer is tangent of negative 225 degrees is equal to negative tangent of 45 degrees, which is equal to negative 1. And our final example, sine of 690 degrees. Again, our number is not between 0 and 360 degrees, and to take care of that this time, we're going to be subtracting 360 degrees. We added 360 when we had a negative angle, and because now our angle is greater than 360 degrees, we're going to subtract complete rotations until we have an angle between 0 and 360. And when we take away one rotation, we get an angle of 330 degrees. Now we'll graph that on our xy axis, and we'll find our reference angle is equal to 30 degrees. Again, another one of those special angles that we need to memorize. So we need to find the sine of 30 degrees, and we remember that is equal to 1 over 2, or 1 half. Our last step again, figure out the sine of the trig function based on the quadrant. If we have a sine in the fourth quadrant, we know that sine in the fourth quadrant is negative, so our answer will be a negative number. So sine of 690 degrees is equal to negative sine of 330 degrees, or negative one-half. Again, you can check this using your calculator. And there we have three examples of solving trig functions for any angle. You'll have a lot of practice in your homework, and as always, email me if you have any questions.